Nintendo likes to keep their products unique. When Microsoft tries motion controls, it's a gimmick. When Nintendo tries motion controls, it's innovative. The Switch is Nintendo's first portable slash home console hybrid. It's called the Switch because it could switch between these two states with ease. I get it. This is the Switch Lite, and much like the 2DS, it goes against everything its predecessor set out to accomplish. Over the past few days, I've fallen in love with it. There is a market for this, and it's a big one. But if you have a Switch already, there's gonna be a lot you wanna consider before you pick this thing up. Thank you, Dollar Shave Club, for sponsoring this video. I don't shave this guy every day, I shave it maybe once every other week, but I do brush my teeth, I shower, I wipe my butt. Hey, do you mind? Thank you, Jesus Christ. Dollar Shave Club's got all that covered. Shower, oral care, deodorants, butt wipes, and most importantly, shaving. You should already know the shave starter set by now, the famous executive razor with the weighty handle and six high quality blades, and the three ounce tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter, which is transparent so you can actually see what you're doing. It also helps prevent ingrown hairs, which is neat. For a limited time, new members get their first month of the razor and the shave butter for just five bucks. After that, the restock box ships regular sized products at regular price. Check it out at dollarshaveclub.com slash wolf to get your first starter set for just five bucks. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash W-U-L-F-F. And now we can finally talk about this guy. There's a lot to unpack here. If you've been living under a rock, the Nintendo Switch Lite is a Nintendo Switch that you cannot dock no matter how hard you try. It lacks the capability on a hardware level. It plays all of the same games that you can play on an original Nintendo Switch. Some games might require additional Joy-Con, like for example, Just Dance, but that's probably not the type of game you'd want to play on this thing anyway. It does not have a rumble for some reason. It also does not have a kickstand, so in order to play it in tabletop mode, you're gonna need to get one of these charge stands or just prop it up against something. But again, that's not really what this is for. It's also significantly smaller than the Nintendo Switch and significantly cheaper. This is for small children or people who don't have a TV or people who play in portable mode 100% of the time. Maybe you mostly play in portable mode and you just want one of the cool new colors. Just don't expect to be using this in tandem with your current Switch, at least not easily anyway. This is for people who either don't have a Switch or want to replace their current one. But we'll get to that. I bought all of the colors, and a lot of you made fun of me. You didn't make fun of the other YouTubers. First of all, I'm giving two of these away, so f you. Second of all, when the Nintendo Switch first came out, I pre-ordered the gray ones because I thought the neon blue and red looked stupid. But then I saw it in person at a Nintendo event, and it looked way better in person than it did in all of the marketing material. I immediately regretted my decision. The same went for all of the other Joy-Con colors after that. They all looked so vibrant in person. So I figured the Switch Lite colors would be no different. The disparity between what you see on screen and what I see in real life isn't really that different. Here I have them next to their pictures so you can maybe see what the difference looks like on camera versus in real life. Teal definitely leans towards the green side under certain lighting. Gray is a little darker than it may appear on Nintendo's marketing and yellow is duller than it appears on camera. None of these are as vibrant as you'd expect. Honestly, after looking at all of them, I actually ended up coming around on the gray one. I think the gray with white buttons actually looks really great. It's nice and clean. It's not as boring as the gray Joy-Cons. I just decided to go for the teal one myself for the YouTube thumbnails because you gotta have some nice, bright, vibrant colors in there. The box is very minimal. It just has the system, a small instructional pamphlet, and the charger. The charger is the same as the OG Switch charger, with some minor differences. It's not shiny plastic anymore, and it looks like it's made by a different manufacturer. The original was made by a company called Lighton, and this one is made by whatever that logo is. Feel free to look at all the other numbers that are different between these two chargers. Maybe together we can see if they've actually changed any of the power delivery issues the original had, but I doubt it. 
The screen looks exactly the same to my naked eye. The color variance is nothing to note. The brightness seems exactly the same. The Switch Lite's screen appears clearer because it's more pixel dense due to its size, but only slightly. The speakers appear to be louder on the OG Switch, but only by about that much. But they still sound really good on the Switch Lite. Someone said that IGN said that they sound more trebly, but I didn't really notice. I love the way this thing feels. It's essentially a giant PSP, but made by Nintendo, so you know, they'll actually support it. Ah, gotcha, just, ah, yeah. <laughs> Even though it's plastic, it's a solid piece of equipment. Nintendo usually makes some pretty tough products, and this is not an exception. It's a lot like the original Nintendo Switch, but smaller. There's some slight differences, like how the heatsink has thicker grates. This will hopefully prevent it from cracking, which is known to happen with the OG Switch. Since there is no kickstand, the microSD card slot sits behind one of these flaps, similar to the game cartridge slot. The face buttons are a little softer, not squishy, they just feel more like a DS. The Joy-Con's face buttons are hard and clicky in comparison, so this is a welcome change. The shoulder buttons feel pretty much identical. The thumbsticks are identical to the Joy-Con's thumbsticks, which is unfortunate because people are already complaining about their Joy-Con's drifting. I wouldn't worry about this. If you purchase a Switch Lite and it does have the drift issue, just return it to the retailer that you purchased it at. And if it's outside of that retailer's return policy, I'm sure Nintendo will cover the cost of the pair no problem because they already do it on the original Switch. The issue isn't widespread enough for you to worry about. It ain't no red ring of death. I personally have never experienced Joy-Con drift on any of my Joy-Con, but I mostly use other controllers anyway. So only time will tell what the hell's gonna happen with my Switch Lite. Speaking of not using the Joy-Con, the D-pad feels amazing. I can't really describe exactly how it feels. It's the size of a Wiimote D-pad, but doesn't really feel like that. It's not as clicky as a DS D-pad either. It feels about as soft as the Hori D-Pad Joy-Con, but doesn't feel as cheap. I'm really happy with the D-Pad's inclusion, but the placement is still not ideal. Playing Celeste for just 30 minutes cramped my hand up real good. The Satisfy Grip for the Switch Lite helped a lot. You'd want to consider this if you're going to be using the bottom half of the Switch at all. If you're going to be playing something like Link's Awakening, where you have your left hand on the thumbstick and your right hand on the face buttons, the Switch Lite is pretty comfortable on its own. Otherwise, if this is your main way to play, you might want to consider a grip of some sorts. But for short stints, I love the way the Switch Lite feels in my hand. I play most of my games in docked mode, so I don't anticipate playing like this all of the time, but the Switch Lite is gonna be for when I want to play portably. So it is nice to have these games in an even more portable form factor. Hori sent over some great cases that I'm sure I will talk about in a future video. Unfortunately, if you plan on using your Switch Lite in the same way that I plan on using it, it's not as easy as it should be. The first thing the Switch does is force you to make a new user account. You can import it from another console, but if you intend to keep that other console, you have to link your Nintendo account from the internet, and that requires a system update that you have to do after the setup process. So the first thing that you have to do is create a fake user account that you're gonna delete later. There is no way around this, and it's not obvious that you have to do this. After the setup, you do the update and link your account and delete the account you just made for no reason. Another super annoying and dumb UX decision is that in order to play any of your digital games without an internet connection, you have to set this up as a primary Nintendo Switch. Your secondary Nintendo Switch will always verify over the internet if you have the right to play the game. This is annoying because the Switch Lite is not my primary Switch. It is my secondary Switch, but I have to make it my primary Switch in order to play games without an internet connection. I frequently purchase games via a web browser and have them automatically download to my Switch, which is in sleep mode. Now it will download to the wrong Switch, which is annoying. After the initial setup, I slapped my old 200 gigabyte micro SD card in there so I could download some games. In order to do this quickly, 
I got the bright idea to put the Switch Lite in my desktop dock enclosure. It won't output to a TV, but it does support USB pass-through. So the light recognizes the network adapter to download games faster. This wasn't that annoying of a process because you can just go down the list of purchased games and click to download almost as if you're checking off boxes. And I didn't want to download all my games to the Switch Lite. I only wanted to download a handful of games, which ended up being about 26. I still, I still haven't downloaded Smash Brothers yet. But we're not done with the annoying UX stuff though. We all know that not every game supports cloud saves. The games that do will automatically upload the new save data to the cloud. They will not automatically download new cloud save data. So you either have to manually download all of your cloud saves individually for every game on your Switch Lite or transfer them via their transfer tool, which you can also only do individually. It's horrible. Probably the worst thing about the Switch Lite. If you intend to use your Switch Lite as your commuter switch, you're going to have to manually download your cloud saves every time you want to pick up where you left off. There's a lot of reasons why this is terrible. This hasn't happened to me yet, but this could cause a save file conflict where a save file that has more progress gets overwritten by a save file with less progress just because it's newer and the system favors uploads instead of downloads. People saw this problem coming and Doug Bowser himself said, yes, you will have the ability to transfer between devices your gameplay experiences. More to come on there, but that is the intention. This made it seem like they were gonna roll out a big system update before the Switch Lite came out, but that never happened. This is something that could be easily fixed with an update, but Nintendo has been dropping the ball on updates recently. I give them a lot of credit for how they handled the first Super Mario Maker with updates. They updated that game like crazy, but the new Super Mario Maker 2, we still don't have a way to play with friends. What the hell's wrong with that? The whole internet has been very vocal about their disdain for Nintendo's online services, and this whole cloud save debacle is just adding fuel to the flames. Izzy over here has been having a mental breakdown on Twitter over this whole thing. Please send him your thoughts and prayers. I really hope he's gonna be okay. There is good news though. If you have a Nintendo Switch already, you should not want a Nintendo Switch Lite. There you go, just saved you 200 bucks. All this doesn't make the Switch Lite a bad console by any means. It's still the perfect console for people who only want to play in portable mode or people who don't have a Switch at all and want to save hundred bucks. And that's a huge market Nintendo will tap into. It's going to sell a butt ton. It's a great system because the Switch is a great system with great games. I just wish it was a better companion to the Switch I already have. I'm still gonna attempt to use this as my portable Switch. I'll be traveling this week and I'll see how it fares. I'm sure everything will be just fine until I get home and need to sync all my freaking save data. So what do you guys think about the Nintendo Switch Lite? Is this something that you were interested in? Is this something that you're still gonna get or got yourself? And what do you think? What are your impressions of it? Leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. Oh yeah, since you stayed this long, let's get, we're gonna give away the yellow and the gray one. You don't get to pick the color if you win. But if you win the yellow one, I'll throw in this cool case because I like the way the, the yellow and blue looks. You know what, for the gray one, I'll give you a clear shell case. I don't, I don't use that stuff. <laughs> and if you want to enter, you can either go to the link in the comments below or you can go over to twitter.com slash thewolfden. There'll be a link there to the contest. Unfortunately, I gotta limit it to US and Canada only. There's just too many countries that are a pain in the ass to ship to. But hey, we got new videos and live streams all the time here. Our schedule is usually in a pinned tweet over on our Twitter now. It's probably gonna be that contest link. We got Wolf Den Live every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time here on YouTube. We got Twitch streams on twitch.tv slash Wolf If you support us here on YouTube by clicking that join button or over on Twitch by clicking that subscribe button, which is free if you have Amazon Prime, you link either of those accounts to your Discord account. You get into our supporter only Discord. You get private chat time with us. You get videos like this one early and you get to play multiplayer games with us at least once a month. I think this week we're doing Mario Kart again. Everybody likes to do Mario Kart. Personally, I want to do Duck Game, but you know what? It's about you guys. But as always, the most important thing that you can do to help support the channel and the easiest thing is just subscribe. That's it. And share this video with a friend, a friend 
that might be interested in getting a Switch Lite and maybe they don't have a Switch already. This is the perfect thing for them. Thank you very much. You got yourself a very good week.